continues next week. I can't believe what we have witnessed. The lob to Tyler Van, the exclamation point. And now Trey Holder. Some frustration with Tyler Bay. And the Buffs have stunned Arizona State. 97-85, they'll play Arizona in the quarterfinals tomorrow. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Buffalo Stampede Television Show. We're here in Las Vegas. We're not in Kansas anymore, kids. Buffaloes get knocked out of the Pac-12 Conference Tournament in the quarterfinals by Arizona. But what an opening round it was. An explosive game for the Buffaloes as the eighth seed of our number nine seed, Arizona State. Scott Wilkie, my broadcast partner in the Colorado Basketball Network, I'm voice of the bus, Mark Johnson. The Buffaloes, by the way, the only team besides Arizona to have won a game in the Pac-12 Conference Tournament every single year, and what an opener it was. That was about as efficient of a game as we've seen from the Buffs all season long in offense. Yeah, certainly one of their best offensive games of the year. They shot the ball well, moved it well. I really thought they played with a lot of energy that led to uh, high efficiency offense. You know, we, we've seen for the Buffs this season, they've been a little bit up and down, and I guess you can expect that from a young team, but they came out, as you talk about, with a great energy early on, and McKinley Wright was spectacular, was two rebounds shy of a triple-double for the Buffaloes. Yeah, we've kind of gotten used to that. It's not we don't have, we aren't blown away by it anymore. But to be talking about triple doubles from a guy that's five foot eleven, maybe six foot, is pretty impressive. And the leadership qualities that he shows also can't can't go wrong there. Yeah, when the Buffs are playing well offensively, like they were in the opening round, what are they doing? They're moving the ball quickly. The players are cutting hard, and you know some of the assists means you're making shots as well. It yep. never hurts when the shots go through the basket. And the Buffs did not, by the way, have any turnovers. In fact, they had six in the first half of that ball game against the Sun Devils. Only one in the second half. Again, that's part of that efficiency we're talking about. Yeah, and to do it against you know what a, a six weeks ago was considered one of the best teams in the country. Yeah, it's pretty impressive, and uh, you know I think that. They weren't quite carried over today. To the offense wasn't carried over today, but the yeah. energy was. Yeah, they, they certainly did. Defensively, the Buffaloes, again, when you talk about Arizona State, they're one of the most efficient offenses in the country. How did you grade the Buffs' defense against the Sun Devils? Probably give it a B. You know, it wasn't, no. it wasn't perfect, but uh, it was good enough. And they're a hard team to defend. With all the speed and quickness out there, one of the most difficult teams to defend against. Buffaloes did have multiple guys in double digits. One of them was Dominic Collier. You know, his parents have followed Dom through throughout his career, the senior for the Buffaloes at a Denver East High School. In fact, I think they've only missed four games total in Dom's career. Home and away, we caught up with them here in Las Vegas. We're here because we believe that the Buffs have a very good future. Our son has had a great career at CU. We love the situation. We wish him the best. My wife has been the leader. We are in Las Vegas at the T-Mobile Arena. CU versus Arizona. You can't get no better than that, baby. We have missed three games in four years, period. On the road, at home, we support the bus. We will always support the bus. Is that right? That's right. We are the best. We are so proud of him. We are so proud of how Dominic's career went. And we're here to support him from now until. Go Buffs. The family aspect has been great. You know, we love the way Dom has played. He's been a trooper all along. He's played since he was five years old. So he dreamed of this, and we're living it. Guys, let's go out and play with great energy, great effort, great toughness. You know what we're capable of. Go on, what you do, guys. Let's go do it. I tell you what, Lori and Daryl Collier were, were some of the phenomenal parents over the course of their son's career. That's kind of the fun thing about college athletics, isn't it? Yeah, I run into them a lot in the airports with my travels coming to games, <laughs> and uh, they did so much traveling, and they couldn't be more supportive of him and the bus in general. Yeah, without question. Now in the second round, the quarterfinals of the Pac-12 here in Las Vegas, the Buffaloes got knocked off by number one seed Arizona. In seven years of the league, the Buffs have met Arizona six times. They won the first one. You remember Los Angeles in the uh, championship game of the Pac-12 Conference Tournament, but uh, they fall in this one, and it really got away from Colorado in the second half. Well, every year, one thing you can count on, you're going to play against a talented group from Arizona, high school All-Americans in general on that team, and today they ran into a team that played pretty well. The Buffs weren't quite good enough to hang with a team that's, I think, one of the best teams attempting the country. Yeah, you know, we talked with Kim English on the postgame show on the radio after the game, and he said it came down to the man categories. Loose balls, 50-50 balls in the court, 
Offensive rebounding, that really had that turn the tide in the second half of this ball game. Yeah, Raleigh Alkins probably came up with five or six loose balls. He seemed to be the quicker and stronger guy getting to those. And sometimes you, the, the casual fan doesn't notice how how big those plays are, but they were today. Colorado did a pretty good job of holding down DeAndre Ayton, who might be the number one pick in the upcoming NBA draft. He only had 10 points and six rebounds, but the other seven-footer, Dusan Ristich, really killed Colorado. Yeah, he's the guy that plays second fiddle to DeAndre, but he's a really good player, all of seven foot, very clever around the basket with his moves and really good footwork. He's a tough guy, a tough guy to deal with. He had a big ball game today. You know, that, that's the thing about Arizona with the deal. You got, you know, one seven footer after another. It's tough to corral that side. I, I thought really in the second half, maybe the turning point is when McKinley Wright went down with the ankle injury. Went for an offensive rebound, came down, twisted his ankle, didn't play the rest of the half. And, you know, Kim English said afterward, you could see the, the look in the guy's eyes. Their leader went out. That, that kind of gave him a blow to the midsection. Yeah, I think they were down eight or nine at the time. And uh, I think the bus really felt like that was probably something that would be the final pebble in the stone, you know, they yep. push them over the edge. Well, the Buffaloes get beat here in the quarterfinals of the Pac-12 Conference Tournament to Arizona. Arizona seems to do that a lot with the Buffaloes, knock them out of the dance. And now for the Buffs, season ostensibly comes to an end with a 17-15 and 15 record. As we take a time out here at the Buffalo Stampede, we'll come back on the other side. Our friend Neil Welk at CUBuffs.com will join us next. What's up, guys? We're here at halftime in the Pac-12, round two of the Pac-12 Tournament here at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Now, I've been hearing a lot of hollering from the stands, and I think that has a lot to do with these people right here. Where are you guys from and who you guys represent? Minnesota, McKinley Wright the Ford. McKinley Wright the Ford? Yes, What's sir. Your What's your name? Yolanda Hitchcock. Yolanda? I'm Pam Frazier. I'm the grandmother and from Chicago. So we got the grandmother. The mother. The mother. And the father. And the father. So this is where McKinley get, gets the kick swag from. The shoe game from, right here? Yes, yes, yes. Mc McKinley almost had a triple-double yesterday. He just moved to second all-time in assists in a single season list already this half. How proud are you of your son? So proud of him. No words to even explain it. Lost for words. So proud. So humble. And let's go Buff. Back in the stampede, that was our Ariana Freeman with McKinley Wright's parents. What a freshman campaign for the Cowboys and Buffaloes. Neil Welk of CUBuffs.com joining us here for a couple of minutes in Las Vegas. Buffs get knocked out in the quarterfinals of the Pac-12 Conference Tournament by number one seed Arizona. All right, Buffs 1-1 one and one in the tournament here. How would you kind of grade what they went through here the last couple of days? You know, I think what they went through in the last couple of days was kind of what we would have expected if you were going to look at it uh, from a realistic, objective point of view. Right. Come out and beat a good Arizona State team. Uh, close to Arizona. Arizona, they're down by three points. McKinley Wright gets hurt. Arizona goes on a 14-0 run, and that's kind of the end of the game right there. You could really feel when McKinley went down midway through that second half with the ankle injury, you could kind of see the steam come out of the Buffaloes. Kim English told us in a post game on the Colorado Basketball Network, he said, our unquestioned leader went down, and our guys knew it. Yeah, there was no doubt about it. I mean, their offense started to sputter. They didn't have the same leadership and guidance out there, and, and he's an emotional spark for him too. He keeps yeah. them going, and so there was a big difference in that team. Uh, you know, after, after there's one takeaway from this whole tournament that I take from the Buffs is, is I like the future. And if yeah. you look at that ASU game and look at all the young guys that contributed that had big moments in that game, a lot of those guys are back next year, and I think this that bodes well for the program. You know, the thing you think about when you're playing against a team the caliber of Arizona, you don't have a lot of room for mistakes out there. And when you have too many turnovers, not a huge number, but 15, you give up 10 offensive rebounds, the 50-50 balls were kind of going Arizona's way. That that really tilts the scales. Yeah, that 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 changed the whole complexion of the game right there, like you said. And, and you said the offensive rebounds. They got outscored, I think, 10-2 to two on second chance points. They gave up 18 points on turnovers. You know, there's a lot of possession right there and when you have 15 turnovers that's 15 times you didn't even get a shoot so yeah and that 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 was the big difference in the game and, and Arizona is a team with two quality guys that are going to be drafted in the NBA this year Alonzo yeah. Trier and DeAndre Ayton are going to be playing at the next level uh, they got their game going today Ayton didn't have a particularly good game but Trier was very good uh, the big guy Ristic was very good they've got a lot of weapons that's a good team by the way that entire starting five is going to be gone for Sean Miller they've got the two young guys who are declaring for the draft have two seniors rather and the other three have all declared including Raleigh Alkins so there are a lot of NBA guys as Neil points out by the way it also ends up being the final game for George King and Dominic Collier seniors for the Buffaloes George King had some great comments after the contest here in Vegas you know I remember you know before CU was recruiting me I was watching Andre here and I told myself you know I could see myself playing 
playing here at the University of Colorado. This is before they recruit me, and then, you know, when I got the offer, um, I kind of already committed in my head. All I, all I need to do is just go to the campus. But uh, it's been a, it's been a, you know, roller coaster journey for me. You know, five years here, and you know, I'm above for life, and I always will be. You know, and uh, I'm looking forward to see. You know, I mean, the future of this program is in some bright hands. I mean, you see this guy right here on my left grow up in this tournament the last couple of games before as well. And you know, with the guy who came me and you know, the guys that we have, it's gonna be exciting to watch. But but again, yeah, it's been up it's been up and down training for me, but you know, this is the greatest campus. See the has the greatest campus, greatest university university in the world. When you look at the history of Colorado basketball, George King's name will be in the top twenty in a number of categories. We continue with Neil Welk of CUBuffs.com. Those two seniors that walk off the court for the final time for the Buffaloes. How do you remember Dominic Collier and George King? You know, I think when you look back and look at their careers, what I'm going to remember is is they left the program in good shape. Yeah. You know, they came here, they they helped build a foundation, and I think the foundation for Colorado basketball is strong. I think they're the leadership they showed uh, George playing, becoming the uh, Pac-12's most improved player, Dom Collier this year, the sixth man of the sixth year man. in the conference. Yep. You know, they left the program in good shape, and I think their their influence will be felt for years. Boy, when you say it's in good shape, you look at the, the freshman on this team, and you throw in a sophomore, Lucas Seward. He, he was as good as any buff down the last month of the uh, season, and the McKinley Wright running the show, Tyler Bay, Deshaun Schwartz, on and on down the line. You talk about being in good shape. It's in real good shape moving forward. Yeah, every piece comes back. They've got somebody that can play every position, beginning with McKinley. Kinley Ripe. You talked about Dallas, Walton, Lucas Seward up front. Evan Batty they hopefully are going to get next year. Uh, Deshaun Swartz could fill in in that shooting guard role very nicely. Laz Nikolic is a guy that could just do a little bit of everything. Yeah. And so, you know, just those guys right there uh, throwing some recruits. They've got a very good uh, core coming back. DeLeon Brown coming back, uh, you know, will be a great reserve coming off the bench. So this is a team that could be, you know, very good in a, in a short time next year. Yeah, and I think uh, it'll be an important offseason from a strength standpoint because you look at those young players where they really struggled against the teams like Arizona of that caliber was the physicality of the ball game. Exactly and that's where a guy like Deshaun Swartz has to hit the weight room and if you look and see the jump that Dallas Walton made from last year to this year and even a Lucas Seward with their weight strength and uh, weight gains strength gains that's what they need. Did Lucas Seward surprise you though down the stretch of the season the way he played? I tell you what he just it was almost like a light bulb went off and he just yeah. even today against Arizona you know driving the ball to the hoop doing a lot of things. He got DeAndre Ayton up in the air once. It was just a beautiful drive. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, coming up next here on the Stampede in Las Vegas, I think she's been photobombing us behind George King's mom. She made the trip from Japan to come and watch her son play here in Vegas. We're going to talk with her next. We're enjoying their largest lead. George King with a big shot for Colorado. George King again from long range. And Sean Miller wants a timeout. Tough fadeaway from George King, who's heating up. He is heating That's up. a great highlight by George King, senior for the Colorado Buffaloes. This is Mom Tressie joining us here. She made the trip from Japan. We love having her on the program. Is this a sad day when it comes to an end? Or? Yeah, I'm sort yeah. of sad, but right. sort of happy that we showed uh, Arizona we got guts, <laughs> you know? I like it. So it's all good. How do you yes. look back on, on George's time? Yeah, we call him George, you call him Zay, but how do you Zay. look on, on Zay's time here at, at CU? Um, CU was the best place for him. Yeah. Um, like I told you before, he got here and said, hey, this is the place for me. Okay. So we just settled in to the black and gold. And plus, I'm sort of a Saints fan anyway. Oh, okay, so, black and gold. Yeah. All right. So, you know, we're already wearing these colors already, <laughs> but it just seemed like the right place. How did he, over the course of five years, grow up as a young man? I think he, oh my I, I always say when, when these guys come on campus, I see them and they're, you know, yes. wet behind the ear, freshmen, right. and they leave growing men by the time they walk off campus. Well, I'm not going to say anything other than I think he was already uh, mentally there prior to arriving, you right. know, because he had to be gone a lot. Yeah. So he had to, like, dig in deep early. And like cut the cut the ropes early because mom was gone, so he had to <laughs> had to get it. He had to make some meals himself sometimes, and so it was all good. Has he ever been a young man? I mean, the one thing we talked about as we're wrapping up the broadcast, talking about he and Dominic Collier being seniors. Right. He's always been a young guy that has represented this program and carried himself in such a mature yes, way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, all that, um, Dom. 
Tori, Josh, yeah. all of them sort of fell in line, even in last year's uh, team. But this team this year, I think, had um, a different flavor to it, yeah. uh, which was really good. And I think we've seen that throughout the course of this season as well. I, I know it's, it's never easy when it's over with. Um, but I want to start by just thanking the seniors, Josh, Tori, George, Dom, okay? Um, I appreciate everything you've done for this program, okay? How you've represented it, kind of, kind of young man you are. So number one, I want to just tip my hat to you guys, okay? I appreciate you, and I love you, and you'll always be part of this family. And uh, it was an honor to coach you guys every day, and we fought today. Special uh, human beings. It's great being with you guys for two years. And, you know, when I look back at this year, I look back to starting in August with this group. It's been a really, really long grind, okay? That's what the seasons are, they're a grind. But how fun and enjoyable it has been with this group because you're all a bunch of great guys, you're great teammates, you're great together. And that's what, from a coaching standpoint, you know, that's what makes coming into the office every day and you know, working on film or whatever, recruiting because of the quality of guys that are in this program. But I like your, I like your fight, I like your effort, and I like your togetherness. I thought, I thought if, if anything this year, through all of our ups, through all of our downs, you guys stuck together as a group. And so as a coach, that makes me feel good. And uh, hopefully you guys, uh, you four seniors, you know, friends with these guys for life, you young guys. A lot of lessons that we learned this year need to be applied to the future of your career and certainly the future of this basketball program. All right, because the future is bright. Because we have enough talent here. We've got a core group of guys that, are, that I, I think are very, very special. Now we're losing some special guys as seniors. They're done, okay? Do not be sitting in their chairs a year, two years, three years from now, feeling what they're feeling, okay? I want you to be sitting in those, those chairs excited about going to the NCAA tournament. Back once again on the Buffalo Stampede, I'm voice of the bus, Mark Johnson, talking skiing. It was the national championships of skiing right here in the state of Colorado this past weekend for the NCAA up in Steamboat Springs, and senior Petra Hinchikova joining us for a couple of minutes. Uh, she walked up here to start the taping process, and I said, congratulations. And you said, well, that's not exactly where you wanted to end. Second place, though. Yeah, it is second yeah. place, but it's the 13 in a row. Right. So you never want to be second, you know, in team. And <laughs> I feel the whole team deserves to win. So yeah. I wished we would be better. And I mean, all of us did a great job, and I'm really proud of them. So we just have to say and admit that Denver was better. You know, here's the thing, though. Under the new scoring system, since they've gone to that, the Buffs set a record for Colorado for scoring. It's just that DU shattered the old record, right? Yeah, that's true. But yeah. actually, better right that he was uh, doing some calculation going to the <laughs> NCAA, and he was counting. And uh, we did everything what he calculated, but it wasn't enough. So, <laughs> yeah. How about the overall weekend? I mean, hosting here in Colorado at Steamboat Springs, not the first time that's happened, but good experience overall? Yeah, I love Steamboat. Steamboat is a great place and all the volunteers there, it's amazing. I love that place and thanks all to, to volunteers, all our coaches and everyone who mm -hmm. put the effort to do it. You were a senior now, how do you look back at your career? <laughs> do you want me to cry? Or... <laughs> I don't know, It's uh, now it's hitting me now when everything is done. Uh, it was amazing and it was definitely the best four years of my life and uh, I just don't want to leave. <laughs> right. Do you think you became a better skier over the course of these four years? Uh, probably. Yeah. yeah. Now I realize that skiing is not just uh, about skiing, it's all also about having fun and uh, about other people and life is more than just skiing. So that's what I learned here definitely. You know, she just got back from the Olympics as well, skiing <laughs> for your home country. How yes. was that experience? Oh, that was amazing. Yeah. It's uh, now I still uh, kind of like I'm living from it and uh, it's great. I like it. All right. We're going to keep talking skiing here in just a moment. It was also a big weekend though for the SEAL lacrosse team and Elliott's team for the first time ever open up Pac-12 conference play with a huge win over the Stanford Cardinal. We have Darby Kiernan with us. So you guys were down at half and had an incredible comeback. What did you guys talk about at halftime and what did you do to come back and get a huge win at home? Um, we just went in in half and knew we had to, had to work hard to come back in the second half and we just knew we had a plan and we had to stick to it and we just worked really well together in the second half and yeah it was really it was it was a really good one it feels really good. 
Right, and Lacella had an incredible second half there. She came up with some huge saves doing everything. How much did that help getting her just on a hot streak late in that game? Oh yeah, she played unbelievable. She came up with a bunch of uh, huge stops in the second half, and our de defense played really well too, so it just was awesome, yeah. And how was getting your fast first Pac-12 win here at home? Uh, it's unreal. I mean, the support here is incredible, and it just feels really good. And yeah, it was just really fun. The fans were awesome. It was an awesome first game. You can look forward to Cal on Sunday. And do you have any thoughts for uh, Paige Songson coming back as an assistant coach over there? Oh yeah, that's it's gonna be it's gonna be fun, and it's gonna be awesome to see her again. So I'm really excited to play against her and to see her. That was a great weekend for lacrosse. Still talking skiing. Petra Hinchakova joining us for another couple of minutes. You know, I was just thinking about this. Now that you've been here for four years and I butchered your name for four years, why don't you tell us exactly how you say it? <laughs> Petra Hinchitova, but you are pretty close. Is that close enough? Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's as good as anybody else, though, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just what happens. We Americanize names when I come over here. What, what did you say? I said we Americanize names when, we, when oh, you yeah, come yeah. over here. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's what we do in Czech, too. So it's... Every country does it, so that's okay. How, how's the experience been, you know, coming from overseas and, you know, learning to live in America for four years? <laughs> yeah, well, first I was uh, really surprised by how different everything is here. Mm -hmm. So everything was super big and <laughs> super different. But uh, now here in Boulder, I realized that Boulder is actually something different. It's like the bubble here in the U.S. <laughs> so I love being here in Colorado and here, especially here in Boulder. So yeah. it's a little bit different. Hey, back to the national championships. You know, it is kind of unique when the Alpine and Nordic teams get to cheer each other on a little bit, right? I mean, uh, so you get, you get to see the other side a little bit, even though you're around them all the time. Yeah, definitely. For us, for Nordies, it's definitely nerve-wracking mm -hmm. because we don't know that sport that much. And... Uh, when we just see them going down the hill, like, come on, just finish and don't break anything. I mean, we are super scared, but yeah. uh, all of them are su really good. So, yeah. and You think of skiing as being an individual sport, but under this circumstance, up at Steamboat this past week, and it really becomes a team atmosphere, doesn't it? Yeah, everything is about the team. I mean, uh, you need the support of all the teammates, and uh, if you don't have a good day, then others have a good day, and that's what uh, we share. And uh, just the happiness is going all, all around the team, yeah. By the way, congratulations to her. She's about ready to graduate in May. Oh, What's yeah. going to happen then? <laughs> That's what I don't know. <laughs> I have to figure it out, I guess. Probably next few weeks will be about to uh, finalizing my decision, yeah. All right. Well, wherever you end up, we're going to be cheering for you, okay? Thank congratulations you. Congratulations on a great career. Thank you. All right. Skier Petra Hinchakova joining us after the national championships in Steamboat this past weekend as we wrap up this week's Bubbly Stampede.